So guys, as promised, um, we are going to be doing a Citroen ZX engine work today. And uh, the plan of action for today is, as you may have been following already, you'll know this engine is already completely torn down except the head. Um, I'm going to rebuild the head and um, I'll take you guys through the process of doing that. In this box we have paperwork there, which I'm not going to put on camera, um, but that's literally just the receipt for this. I've got a complete head, complete engine gasket set from one seller on eBay, and it didn't come with a head gasket, so I've got the head gasket for this engine just there. This is an XUD9A engine, which is a 1.9 diesel. It's not a turbo, and that engine you will find in the Xantias, the ZXs, um, some Bolingos. It's in a lot of places, this engine. Um, so um, this is going to be relevant to anyone who has the XUD9 engine. Um, but obviously, as as you guys know, this is my ZX engine. I'm going to basically, like I said, rebuild this today. And we'll, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this opened up. Um, I'm going to use the box just to kind of put everything loosely in so I can get better access to um, the bits. For reference purposes, if need be, we've got the... Um, well, I will need that for like torque settings and stuff like that. And So guys, the first thing we need to do is remove this vacuum pump. And this has got three 13 mil bolts on it. It comes off just like so. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this round so we've got the front access available. Guys, we've got one, two, six um, 13 mils on the top here. These all need to be undone. So now we've got them out. We should be able to lift this cap off because it's it's popped up anyway. Be able to lift all that off just like so. Pop that down there. We'll take that cap off. Take that cap off. And now we've got all the um, lifters. If I just get on magnet, lift them out like so. So we've got all the, lift, all the uh, lifter caps off. We get all the shims out. So I've taken you off the tripod to show you that I've got all the uh, camshaft cap uh, caps, the camshafts at the back there. There's only one oil seal at one side because the uh, Vacuum pump goes on with a rubber gasket and rubber ring there as well. Valve caps and the valve shims. Um, it's imperative that all this stays in the same orientation as what it came off of the head. Um, I've still got all the valves in. I've got my uh, valve spring compressor set up and that's why I brought you off the tripod because it'll be easier for me to show you this. Basically, that there sits just on the valve at this side keeping the pressure at that side and then that then goes down and we'll put this bar through here and wind it down like so and as you'll be able to see now the difference between this one and this one this one's all wound down and compressed so I should now be able to get a magnet in there and pull these little collets off as one as you can see one's off and then there's the other one so now if we just uh, unwind that that will release the spring and it will release the valve and now what we'll be able to do is take the top of the valve spring compressor off the actual uh, valve spring will come out there's that there and then we should then just be able to push that through and put it out from underneath and there's one valve so what i'm going to do guys is i'm going to do the rest and then i'll bring you back in a little while so guys all the valves are now out 
as you can see clearly there we've got them all uh, laid out in the order that they came out uh, on my bench with all the little collets there and the springs everything's all uh, laid out as it came out just uh, like so um, I've got the valve stem oil seals in there still except for one and the reason is because I was going to pull some of these out and then show you how I'll do it but I can't find my valve stem oil seal remover which is effectively a pair of needle nose pliers with a little tiny cup on the end so I've just ordered some more for a 24 hour post um, hopefully they turn up very soon because if I can't use the valve stem oil seal remover needle nose pliers usually work but they do make a mess of them not that I want to reuse them again anyway because I'm going to put new in but you can see that's completely crushed in the process of removing it um, and that took a ridiculous amount of time to do I'm not going to remove the injectors I'm just going to tape them up um, so no crud goes in there and we're going to basically clean it all up down this side clean it all up down that side ouch we're going to clean all this up as well and i have quickly wiped these down but we're going to clean all these up um as well i'm going to um pretty much uh do that off camera so we've got five out so far all mangled and then we've got three left i have found out a normal pair of pliers just about goes in there and if we twist it and twist it and wiggle it backwards and forwards it does eventually pull out and that's now only two left it's covered up with a towel wonder why i kind of got a bit too carried away it's clean but it's um also blue so i've cleaned it up and i've painted it and i've also put all the valve stem oil seals in except for one because i'm going to show you how i do it and i have gr uh, used what i call my swizzle stick and also the cutting compound to cut and seat correctly seven of the valves and um i say that but i've taken them back out because what i do is i that's why there's no valve stem oil seal in there because i like to cut and seat the valves take the valve out put the valve stem oil seal in and then lubricate the valve stem oil seals when i um put the valves in and to lubricate everything as I'm putting it together, I've got this Lucas assembly lube. So um, basically, I don't want to push the valve through the new oil stems and end up splitting them. So if I put some of that uh, engine builder's lubrication on there, that'll prevent that from happening. That's why I cut them in without new valve stem oil seals in there and then put them in afterwards. So I'm going to set you up on the tripod and we'll get this turned over so it's facing up the other way and we'll cut the last valve in so you can see how I do that. So guys we get um, what I call my swizzle stick, the valve, literally stick them both together like so on the suction cup. We then get the coarse end of this cutting compound, the other side is a fine end. We literally just put this around the edge like so on the um, tapered edge of the actual valve and then we pop that in there like so and the reason I'm using this swizzle stick because you can use the drill with like a piece of hose on the other side and the reason I do that is because you if you listen carefully you will be able to hear a sound difference between when it's cutting and when it's finished doing what it needs to do and that's why I like to use this so I can actually hear it, whereas if you're using a drill attachment, it's personal preference, because some people like to use the drill, get it done quicker, but I don't like to use the drill, because all I'll hear is the drill rather than the cutting noises. And if you listen carefully, I'll shut up now and you'll be able to hear what's going on. You notice how it's got quieter? That's how you know that cutting compound has done its job. So you don't end up doing it more than needed. So basically, I'm going to do another yeah, another course time round with this. I'm going to do this again with uh, the coarse paste. And then I'm going to do two more runs exactly the same with the fine paste. 
So I've done my last uh, fine. I've had the valve out and cleaned it all with a bit of a blue roll. And you'll see how smooth that is now. And then I'm literally just going to now put some carb cleaner on the whole head, on all the valves, give it final clean. And then when we've done the last valve stem oil seal, these um, shafts will get lubricated up and go in there and then they won't be coming out again after that. Right, so hopefully you can see okay with that. Um, we've got the last valve stem oil seal to go in. Um, it's got little rubber ridges inside there. So you don't need to be too hefty when putting these on because they'll push on nicely. When you want to take them off, they can be an absolute nightmare. But putting them on isn't too much of a problem. Just so we know we don't end up losing it, I'm going to use a pair of needle nose pliers with no pressure on there whatsoever. I can pretty much pull that out of my fingers because I don't want to squeeze it or crush it. Literally just have it so it rests enough on there. I can then get my finger in there. Pliers can come out thumb can go in and I can just push around the edges carefully to seat it into place all the way round to make sure it seats properly into its location because the thing about it is they've got a little spring on them and if you push directly in the center you end up having the spring pop off so you've definitely got to push all the way around each edge of it we'll just get some oil on the top of the valve stem oil seals just so we know that these valves are not going to go in dry so guys as you can see when you push it in i'm just literally rotating it backs and forwards just so i don't put too much pressure on the seal and then that'll just slot straight in nice and easily and by putting that lubrication on there like i said it saves splitting the new seals so and that's the last thing i want to do because i haven't got money to buy replacements so that's done We'll get it turned back over and we'll put the uh, springs back on. So far one valve in. As you can imagine it's pretty much the same as reversal. We've got the valve spring compressor there. We've got the uh, other side there. And we literally put this side onto the corresponding valve that we're working on. Which will be the second one in. And then we'll put this side onto the spring. So if we pop the spring into there like so. We then put that all on, wind it down so it got the compression on it, and then we can put the little um, the little collets in, which are a bit of a pain in the bum, but they need to go in. So that's valve number two now installed, all done up and ready, ready to crack on with the rest. I'm going to get the rest knocked out while out off a camera, basically. So we've got all eight valves done. Let's put some valve shims in. I'm just going to put them. Actually, going to put them back where they come from. This was a running engine. It ran fine before I went through. Uh, water and hydro locked it which caused the con rod to bend I'm just going to make sure they're in exactly the same place as they came out what i am going to do though is i'm going to put another little blob of oil on each one of these just so i know nothing's going to start up dry and then i can put the shims on and put another little blob of oil in and um, then put the caps on afterwards and just like so we've got the last two caps to put in like so. Just before I put the new seal on to this end of the um, camshaft, which I might add fits perfectly, I will also like to add my kit comes for every possibility note that this engine goes through. And some, some vehicles obviously wouldn't have the vacuum pump, I'm guessing, on here because there is a seal for this end as well. But I can't use this seal because, so don't think I'm bodging anything or forgetting to do something. I actually can't use that seal because the vacuum pump will sit just inside there over the top with its own seal on. So that is not actually needed. So we are only going to put one of these on to this end being the new one. And there's I've still got the old one on there, but I'll just literally pop that onto the um, camshaft and then we'll pop this in. So guys, we've got the... Um 3 8 ratchet with a small extension and a 13 mil because i'm going to use the 3 8 ratchet first and then i'm then going to put the small extension and the 13 onto the torque wrench to tighten them up with a correct torque we've also got some gasket sealant because literally just underneath here we've got to put a little uh a little blob of sealant just to seat it in just to well that's what it says in the haynes manual so i better do as i'm told eh all the lubrication in there ready to go so let's just sit camshaft sprocket in there like so and these are numbered in such a way that we got this is the timing belt end this is the um vacuum pump end and then it goes one two three four five six seven eight 
And what it says in the Haynes manual as well is it's a one, two, three, sprocket number four should be pointing downwards. Five, number six should also be pointing downwards. And the keyway should be facing directly up. So what that means is we can't really have it like that. Well, we could, but it'd just be out of time. So we may as well set it up so it's in time. And we just give that a little bit of a push down. That'll tighten up a bit more later. And I'm literally just going to put a little blob of that on there. A little blob of that on there. I'm then going to put some lubrication oil on there like so. And pop this first cap on. More lubrication on here. Pop that into there like so. So that's now in. What we've got to do though is we've got to take this extension with the 13 mil, put it onto a torque wrench and torque them down to the 20 newton meters specification. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We have a resprayed rocker cover and a brand new gasket for it three cleaned up bolts they're as best as i'm probably going to get them even though they're a little bit you know, still but and we've also got in the gasket set three there's only two here but i have got three um little gaskets to go over the screw holes so let's put this on so guys that is uh now on with its a uh, lovely shiny new gasket now let's pull this forward and then we'll put it on there right so this now sits on there nicely like so and then we've then got these which i'm going to put the screw on to first and then we'll then put that down into there like so and tighten that by hand first yeah so i'm literally going to tighten them down like i did before with the 3 8 ratchet right so let's just double check this we've got camshaft cover bolts just there 20 newton meters seems a bit tight just for a camshaft but it says it clearly just there so i suppose it must be right all right basically guys i've decided to ignore the haynes manual because 20 newton meters is a ridiculous amount of tightness just for rocker cover bolts considering it's got a very soft rubber gasket on it anyway it just feels like with these tiny little 10 mil studs it's gonna be yeah i'm not doing 20 newton meters i'm probably gonna end up having a bolt snap on me or something or i'll just crack the uh the cover and i'm literally all i'm doing is i'm just going to nip them up so they're nice and firm with the shortest part like that i like i did on the um Sephira gasket um so that they're nice and firm but i know they're not overstressed in any way i think my ratchet's falling apart oh that's not very good I need a new ratchet it's nice and tight for that one and i'm happy to call that done so guys we've come to the end of the video and what a result don't you think i think it looks amazing personally um and yeah so um that head is now completely done um in the next video we'll do a little bit of work on the actual um block itself i'm not entirely sure what it is but i've got honing tools we need to hone it all out we've got to sort out the pistons put them back in and pull the crankshaft back in so we've got a lot to do in the next video but anyway enough blabber for me because i have no idea how long this video is going to be um because there's a lot of involved i didn't record any of the footage in regards to painting but it doesn't take a genius to know how to paint something you just mask and tape the bits that you don't want paint to go on and then you spray the rest um so I will bid you farewell guys but before i do go please consider subscribing just here and there's another one of my amazing videos just above it just there take care guys bye for now